Hello, my name is Bob Sweeting. I'm the president of Power Break Service. We're a specialty brake company that's been around 60 years building high performance brakes for Rose Parade floats, handicap vehicles, military uh, vehicles, and of course our favorite hot rods. We're here at Art Cars uh, California Performance Transmission. Art Cars has been a legend in racing transmissions for 50 years. Uh, we have two different cars. Both of these cars were supercharged by the factory because of uh, because of low vacuum issues. The factory installed electric power brake units on them. The problem with these electric power brake units is they have a tendency for the electric motor pump to fail. So the reason that the electric boosters were put on was because the engines did not produce the vacuum to operate a conventional power brake unit. But now that these electric boosters are failing, the cars become uh, a situation with bad or inadequate brakes. Our solution is to install the Bosch Hydro Boost system. The Hydro Boost runs out the power steering pump. So we have no vacuum issues, no electrical issues, it's a safe, reliable booster. This 91 T-Bird Super Coupe originally came with a uh, factory supercharged V6. The owner has converted this uh, Super Coupe to a Vortec blown 427 inch Windsor engine, uh, which is great for the original power brake unit's uh, idea, but now the original electric power brake unit is failing on it. So the brakes occasionally uh, pedal gets rock hard. So this is the reason we're converting this car to the reliable Bosch Hydro Boost. One of the problems with the uh, original T-Bird and Lincoln LSC electric power brake units is that they were made in Germany. No parts have been available for these uh, brake systems for, for more than 10 years. And uh, it, when the parts were available, they cost more than the value of the entire car. As you can see, it's a very complicated unit, and uh, that is that is why we convert it to the Hydro Boost to make a simple system that's reliable and eliminate the complexities of the electric brake system. First step in removing the original electric brake booster is to remove the brake lines. Uh, on this system, it has three brake lines: one to each front wheel, and then one to the rear brake system. This is because the anti-lock system is built into the electric brake booster. One issue you may want to consider in uh, any type of brake work is not to run uh, high power lines, high voltage lines through your brake system, which in this case we have to remove this wire just to get it out of the clutter of the brake system. So try to remember not to combine electrical power anywhere near your brake lines or brake hoses. All right, with all the uh, the wires and brake lines disconnected, the four nuts from the uh, under the dash, brake pedal, uh, clevis pin, we're now able to remove the electric brake booster. This is an example of the complexity of the electric power brake unit. 
uh, which also includes uh, the anti-lock brake system. And you see this is quite a bit of uh, issues to deal with. If anything fails, the electric brakes go working. So our hydro boost has no electrical wires hooked to it. It just runs off the power steering pump. And it's very reliable. This is too much to deal with, especially on a car that's 20 years old. We, just, we don't know where things are going to fail. So we just tie these out of the way and they're no longer used. Comparison between the electric uh, brake unit that came on uh, the Buick Grand Nationals and the Ford uh, Super Coupes. Issue number one with these systems is the electric motor. The electric motor has phenolic veins and they tend to wear out quickly. Then the, the pump cannot build uh, the, the necessary pressure to open the pressure switch to, um, to stop the motor. The other issue with these motors is once the seal goes bad between the pump and the electrical part of the motor, it then floods the electrical motor with brake fluid, which shorts it out. That's why these systems start pumping fuses, because the motor's filling up with brake fluid. And since there are no replacement motors for these, the best solution is just to remove it, uh, remove the electric motor and all its complexities of wiring and go to the simple hydro boost which is, offers superior stopping no electrical connections has a, um, allows for different master cylinders to be installed which are easily replaceable or rebuildable the hydro boost is rebuildable normally they last 200,000 miles before they need rebuilding uh, there are no new parts available for the electric brake boosters Nothing that's available is uh, used units, which usually last about six months, if that. And it's too much work to replace these every six months. So that's why we recommend the Hydro Boost. It takes five electrical harnesses to connect the, uh, the electric brake booster to the car. Uh, well, part of it's the, uh, the anti-lock brake system, which we will delete on this car. Since it has four-wheel disc brakes, we're not really concerned about rear brake lockup. You notice the Super Coupe T-Bird came with this electric uh, power brake in it, which has kind of a special bolt pattern to it. Uh, the Hydro Boost has a different mounting plate, so we have to basically use a template that we made for this car to set up the mounting plate for the Hydro Boost system. So this required re-drilling uh, the holes through the firewall. So in our kit, it'll come with a template that have those holes already marked to drill the firewall. So we've got this all set up. Uh, this being a 91 T-Bird, it's kind of a prototype system. Uh, it's not a common one, but we do all the special vehicles anyway. So now the booster uh, has an angle mounting bracket to clear the Ford spring tower. And now we're ready to install the unit in the firewall. Okay, now we've got the hydro boost mounted on the firewall and you can see how much more compact that unit is. Now we're ready to put on the master cylinder. Uh, you notice that most master cylinders have two ports to feed the front and rear brakes. Uh, this vehicle, since it had ABS, it had separate lines to the left front and the right front brake lines. So we have to tee those two lines in to the single port going to the front brakes on the master cylinder. So that's what we'll do next. You see on the Fords, it's a very tight fit, especially with the electronic uh, adjustable shock absorbers. So in this system, we actually have to use the master cylinder with the lines facing the engine to clear the, the shock.
center is now bolted on, and we had to uh, run a new line for the master cylinder system because the uh, former anti-lock system had three lines coming out of the anti-lock system. So we're teeing the two lines to the front brakes together so that we, because we only have two ports on the master cylinder. So that goes over to the T. So that'll supply equal pressure to both front brakes. Most modern master cylinders have no check valves in them, as the drum brake master cylinders used to have. Disc brakes, they don't use a check valve. So this makes it relatively easy to bleed the system because it will gravity bleed without the check valve. So we're just going to fill the master and leave the lines loose and allow it to bleed itself out, which will take a few minutes. But uh, we'll, do the, we'll let it bleed while we're doing other things. You see this this port of the mass cylinder is already dripping fluid, which means it's already self-bled this uh, to the rear brake side. So we'll just tighten that line up, and uh, it'll work its own bubbles out uh, just by sitting here with uh, the gravity feed. This line is going to the front brakes. It's already starting to drip fluid now, so it's it's almost bled out by itself. Just while we've been doing other things. The, the system has basically bled itself. Uh, the next item is to connect the uh, pressure hoses from the power steering pump into the hydro boost, then out of the hydro boost back down to the steering rack. This is a, a special fitting that we came up with. It's our own design. It's a dash six banjo fitting. Makes it very con uh, convenient to connect to the hydro boost. We supply it with one end crimped on. Then we leave the hose extra long so that you can route it any way you want, mark it, cut it, and put the reusable end on it. Okay, now we're going to route the, the banjo hose. So we're just going to screw it in uh, loosely for now just to get the length. Once we route the hose where we want, then we'll mark it and cut it and put the uh, reusable hose end on the stainless hose. The, the banjo allows the hose to swivel any direction we want it. We can go over here, but it's best back here. While we have the car up on the hoist, we're going to go ahead and bleed the caliper. We'll let a gravity bleed while we're doing some other work just to get that last little bubble of air out of the out of the line T that we put in. You see it, it's dripping just by gravity, so it'll bleed itself. Now we're ready to run the hoses. First uh, thing we do, of course, is remove the original power steering hose that goes down to the steering box. And we're going to replace it with an AM fitting into the pump. A swivel 90 to uh, make the turn. Then when we measure our line, this will then connect pump to the hydro boost. Now a unique fitting that we've designed is a banjo fitting. This makes a, a, a very high flow, uh, flow design to the banjo bolt, plus it allows any way to swivel it around so we can connect it anyway and make it look clean.